Hey guys, this is Haley from OneOnRabbits.com and in today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit different and be talking about cats. Today we are going to be talking about how to create an enriched litter box setup for your cat. One of the most common reasons that cats are surrendered to shelters or rescues is because of inappropriate elimination, also known as pooping or peeing outside of the litter box. I believe most of these issues could be fixed if every cat had access to an enriched litter box setup. So cats are predators, but they are also prey. So when the cat is eliminating in the wild, it puts them in a very vulnerable position to be attacked by a predator such as a large bird or other predators that could attack a cat. <laughs> Even though our house cats are not exposed to predators, their instincts are still the same. So in order for a cat to feel safe and be able to perform their instinctual behaviors when eliminating, they need a proper litter box setup. Step one, of course, is picking the proper litter for your cat. Our domesticated cats used to live in very sandy climates. That is why our house cats prefer to eliminate in a sandy consistency of litter. Texture is very important to cats. When given the option of several different litters, cats will always gravitate towards the more lightweight sandy material versus a hard pelleted type litter. Clumping or non-clumping, it literally comes down to easy cleaning and clumping litter does provide an easier way to keep the litter box smelling clean and fresh for your cat to eliminate in. Strong odors are definitely a reason a cat may not want to use a litter box, so I personally think clumping is an easier option as you can remove the urine every single day without a doubt and keeps everything nice and fresh. The only reason you would not want to use clumping litter is if your cat has a medical condition that causes clumping litter to be dangerous for them, such as pika. Some litter also contains scents added in to try and make the litter box smell more fresh to a human. However, these are very dangerous for cats. It can lead to upper respiratory infections. It can also steer a cat away from using the litter box because of such a strong odor. So you never want to use anything scented in your litter box. You should also never really have a scent coming from your litter box. It just never smell like pee or poop or dirty. If it does, that means your litter box is not appropriately cleaned or does not have a proper setup. Or it could mean that your cat is sick and something is wrong with them. The most common litter that everyone knows about is clay litter. Many people don't like clay litter because of how dusty it is and they're afraid it may irritate a cat's respiratory system. While that may be true, there are some clay litter that is super dusty and not the greatest. I personally use Tidy Cats Unscented and I have never noticed a dust issue. Like, it's never been dusty in my face, it's never been dusty in my cat's faces. I have used like knockoff brands that were really dusty though, so I just stay with the name brand one. Also, with a proper litter box setup, there shouldn't be anything confined that would hold or trap dust from escaping into the air. So that is also gonna help a lot with your cat's lungs and being healthy. The downside to clay litter is it's not the greatest for the environment, which is why a lot of people do not prefer clay litter, which is very understandable. There are a lot of natural litters available uh, that are very sandy and texture-like. The one thing you wanna be aware of is always provide a new litter box with the new type of litter before switching your cat's litter. You wanna make sure that you can see whether your cat prefers the old litter versus the new litter, and if they don't touch the new litter, that's kind of a good visualization that they're not gonna use the new litter box or they're not gonna enjoy the new litter box as well with that new litter. So there are a lot of natural litters out there. I personally can't use them with my cats because my cat does have pika, which is a condition where they eat inappropriate things and my cats do not eat the clay litter, but they do eat all of the natural litters. I think I've tried like four or five different types and they all take mouthfuls of the litter and eat them, which is very, very dangerous. So if your cat ever eats a litter, stop using that litter. It is not safe. <laughs> Another really popular litter that has been raging around TikTok and YouTube and a lot of social media platforms is pine pellets. The reason this got so popular is because they're very cheap. They're about six bucks for 40 pounds. However, 
It is not natural for a cat to go to the bathroom on such a hard texture. It doesn't provide a sandy-like consistency, which is what a cat is used to in the wild or instinctually is used to uh, digging in, and it doesn't provide enough enrichment and the correct texture for a cat to eliminate in. So avoid pellets at all costs. There's also a natural litter made of corn called the world's best cat litter. That was one of my favorite natural litters that I was able to try. Um, I found it worked very well and the texture was very good, so that might be an option that you guys could try. The issue that I have found is that corn molds very easily. And because of that, if you live in a very humid climate, you may not be able to use this litter because it molds very, very fast or it molds easy. So for me, I live in a very humid place, uh, specifically in the summer, and we already struggle with mold like in our human toilets and in other places in our home. So when I did try out the world's best cat litter, it just molded immediately. So I wasn't able to use that. However, if you don't live in a humid climate, I know a ton of people who use this litter and don't have any issues with it. So thought I would just throw that out there. And obviously you wouldn't wanna use a litter that molded in your house because mold is not good for your cat's lungs either. Next is the depth of the litter. So how deep should your litter be? Well, for a cat to have an enriched experience, they need to have at least three inches of litter, if not more. I always use more than three inches if possible, um, but as you scoop the litter box throughout the month, it does lower the amount of litter that is inside because it's a clumping litter. So every time they pee, a little bit of litter is being thrown away. So over time, it kind of goes down. So that's why I start out with a lot more than three inches so that I don't have to like keep refilling it throughout the month. Another important thing you should think about is how many litter boxes you should have in your home. The number of litter boxes you should have are gonna depend on two different things. One, how many cats you have in the home, and two, how many stories or how many levels of your home you have. So for every cat you have, you should always add one litter box. So if you have one cat, you would need two litter boxes. If you have two cats, you would need three litter boxes and so on and so forth. You just add one litter box in addition to how many cats you have. I hope that makes sense. The other rule of thumb is how many levels you have. So if you have a three level home um, that has three stories, you would need at least three litter boxes. One litter box on each story of your home. So even if you only had one cat, you would still need three litter boxes for each level. Another question may be where to place the litter box. In all honesty, it's doesn't really make a huge difference on where you place it, but there are a few places that you should not place it. One is in a very high traffic place in your home. Most cats are not gonna enjoy going to the bathroom in like a really noisy living room with a bunch of kids and family members. Another thing is you don't want it in a tiny closet or somewhere super confined. That is because our cats, again, are still part prey, which means when they go to the bathroom, that is their most vulnerable point. And if they're in a very small enclosed box or closet, they're gonna feel like if something was to enter that room, they would be trapped and there would be no way for them to escape. So small closets or those like litter box houses are off limits as those are not gonna provide an enriched experience for your cat and could lead to litter box issues. My favorite place to put it is in the corner of a large room. So I don't have a noisy household because I, I live by myself. So I have one litter box in the corner of my main room and then I have two litter boxes in my basement, one on one corner, one in the other. It's just a big room, you know, it's not anything special. So I just prefer to put it in a room. You can put it like, you know, in a bedroom or in a main room if you don't have like crazy kids and people over all the time. A spare room, even like a laundry room if it's like a bigger laundry room. You know, there's a bunch of different places you could put it. Another thing you should note when placing your litter box somewhere is never to place your litter boxes side by side. That is because if you place a litter box side by side next to each other, in a cat's eyes, they view it all as one litter box. So this can be an issue, especially if you have multiple cats in the home. Uh, the reason that we have multiple litter boxes with multiple cats is to avoid territorial problems and um, you know, protecting litter boxes and things like that. If all of your litter boxes are side by side, 
your cat is going to view that all as one space and territorial or be protective over that one space, which could lead to the other cats in the home having to eliminate in other areas such as the floor. So that's why you always want to have your litter boxes very spaced out so that your cat doesn't view it in their mind all as one. Another thing that's very important is not to use covered litter boxes. There are tons of things out there proving that covered litter boxes lead to respiratory infections and asthma in cats. They are very poor at providing proper ventilation, which can lead to respiratory and asthma type symptoms and issues. Another big thing is covered litter boxes do not provide enough escape routes for the cat to feel safe in. A lot of the times there's only one door and they can feel very trapped in there. And also most covered litter boxes are not even close to the proper size for a cat. All in all, they're, they're very dangerous and they're not good for your cat's health. Avoid them at all costs. The next thing is extremely important. We're going to be talking about what size your cat's litter box should be. This is probably where a lot of cat owners get it wrong because the cat market or the pet industry does not sell properly sized litter boxes for cats. Everyone's always trying to switch to the automatic litter boxes or the ones that are super cute and that you can hide away, but these are all so detrimental to your cat's health and well-being and behavior. Um, and you really just need to avoid them. So how big should your box be? Well, that's gonna depend on your cat and what size your cat is. The minimum your litter box should be is the length of your cat's nose all the way to their outstretched tail. So the length from their nose to their outstretched tail is how big your box should be or it should be bigger. It should not be any smaller than this length. Because of this, a lot of the times you will have to use storage bins versus a litter box for your cat. That is because there simply isn't large enough litter boxes on the market that can fit a cat comfortably in those recommendations. Obviously, if you have a very small cat or a kitten, this is going to be very different, but for an average sized adult cat, most times you're going to need a storage bin. You can cut an entrance in the side to make it easier for your cat to get in and out, especially if they're elderly. For me, my cats don't really care, and I used to have my mom's cat come over when I would pet sit her, and my mom's cat doesn't squat when she pees. So she pees standing up straight, so I have to have really tall sided litter boxes because of that. I also prefer tall sided litter boxes because I think it contains any messes or anything, especially if your cat was to become sick. So I just leave mine like this, but my cats are very young and very healthy. So you might need to cut a little entrance if your cat is older or doesn't like to jump over the edge. If your container is very tall sided like mine, you need to make sure that it is see-through. The reason for a see-through container, again, is to make your cat feel more safe. If this was all a solid color and your cat was inside of it, they would feel a lot more trapped and enclosed, which would make them feel less safe when eliminating. Again, even though there are no predators in our home for our cats, our cats still instinctually look for predators while they're eliminating, and if they can't see them, that's gonna lead them to not want to eliminate in that area. So that's why we provide this, even though our cats are safe in the home, or they should be, <laughs> Um, it all goes back to your cat's instincts and what they think in their head. Another thing to help your cat feel safer is to always provide two entrances and exits to your litter boxes. So one of them will obviously be just jumping in and out over the edge of the litter box, but the second option should al always be a raised elevated platform that they can jump onto. That's because some cats will feel safer if they can jump onto something and be elevated, as this is something a cat would do naturally or instinctually to feel safe, is to get up high. That's why cat trees and cat walls and cat shelves are loved by so many cats, is because they feel a lot safer when they're up high and can oversee things. So putting something next to the litter box so that they can jump up onto makes them feel a lot safer. So something I like to use as an exit for the litter box is a short tower cat scratcher. I find these are like the perfect height. They're like two feet tall 
um, and my cats love to sleep in them and they're also a scratcher so they're like multi-purpose I only have one of them currently just because they are you know more expensive they're like 40 to 80 dollars depending where you buy them um, so because I haven't been able to find one cheap enough I do have a pair of pet steps at one of my cat's litter boxes I got this for free on the side of the road and then I also just have a plain bin next to one of my other litter boxes um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy like you don't have to get the fancy cat scratcher obviously the cats would probably um, enjoy it more but uh, you can use anything a chair a stool anything that they can jump up on so eventually in the future I do want to replace all of mine with the cool cat scratchers but until I'm able to find some that aren't crazy expensive I'm just using stuff I have around the home next is cleaning the litter box so how often should you clean it fully or just scoop it uh, personally I like to scoop mine about once a day I don't find that I need to scoop it more than once a day just because they're so large and they just don't get full fast enough to scoop it more often so I just scoop mine once a day and then for cleaning out the entire litter box because it's such a large litter box and I'm scooping it once a day the litter really doesn't get that dirty um, obviously this is going to depend on the type of litter you use but the type of litter that I use which is the tidy cats unscented um, I personally don't have to fully change the litter that often I would say every one to three months um, I know that's a very odd mixture but it depends on the litter box because cats tend to pee in one box and poop in another uh, cats like to pee and poop in different places separately so because of that some of my litter boxes don't get as dirty as the other ones because they're not being used as much or the cats are just pooping in it which poop tends to not get the litter box as dirty I find um, as much as the pee so yeah it depends on the litter box but depending which one every one to three months maybe more like every two to three months but definitely if you notice the litter getting dirty definitely replace it but I think that's one of the biggest drawbacks people find or say when they see I have such big litter boxes they're like wow that must be really expensive but because I'm only like changing the litter every two to three months I am only buying like two bags of litter a month and that's it so I spend about 40 bucks I think a month uh, sometimes I only spend 20 I spend 20 to 40 bucks a month on litter which I don't think is that bad for two cats um, I use 80 pounds of litter per litter box so two bags of 40 pounds so I use 80 pounds per litter box it costs me about $40 to fill up a litter box and I only have to change them every couple months so I just kind of rotate which one I change and yeah I don't know 20 to 40 bucks a month in my budget isn't really that big of a deal to me and it's kind of what should be necessary for cats so I like to add a couple more things to make litter care easier this doesn't involve the cat in any way this is more for the human um, I really like the plastic chair mats from Amazon they're just like to protect your floor from a rolling office chair but I like to put them under my litter boxes in case the cat was to accidentally pee over the edge or poop over the edge you know it's just there to protect your flooring from any messes I also really like these very large litter mats they have holes on the top and then they're open on either end so you can dump the litter back into the litter box this helps from that sandy like litter material from being spread all around your home because I know that's one of the most common complaints with using a sandy like material is the mess but we need to be doing this for our pets and for their overall well-being so adding this mat is definitely going to help there are other mats on the market as well I just found that this one was easier to clean another thing I really enjoy is the litter genie this just makes scooping so much easier I find that I'll do it more often because I don't have to go into the laundry room grab a bag go back to the litter box scoop it out after I'm done put the bag in the garbage and there's just so many different steps and because I have a disability all of those extra steps made me more tired and fatigued and scooping the litter boxes actually makes me very symptomatic so I wanted it to be as easy as possible for my disability as well as for 
any normal human. And the Litter Genie is definitely where it's at. Some people may not like it because it does use plastic bags, um, so I completely understand that, but I personally find it super helpful with all of my medical conditions and just being a human. <laughs> so I, ha I put one next to each of my litter boxes and it makes it so much easier. So now that we have a proper setup for litter boxes for cats, let's go through some of the improper litter box behaviors that you can watch out for in your cat either before or after you change your litter box setup to show if your cat is having an enriched experience or not. There was a research study done on cats using a small litter box versus a very large litter box. In the research study, they found out that a cat's elimination process is a lot more complex than they realized. There are 39 different behaviors that a cat can display while using the litter box. It was also shown that a relatively brief litter box experience may be a more positive experience versus a cat who stays in the litter box a long time. The research study also showed that cats will continue to use a litter box even if their behaviors are displaying frustration. So that means even if your cat is in a small litter box and you're like, oh, my cat uses the litter box fine, there's nothing wrong with it. This research study proved that even if your cat is frustrated and showing frustrated behaviors, they tend to still choose to use the litter box even if they're frustrated. But that also shows that if a cat becomes more stressed or irritable in other places of their life, that might be the tipping point for them to finally just not use the litter box because they're already so stressed out in other areas and the litter box is so stressful for them that they may just decide not to use it. That's why providing a proper enriched litter box setup is so important. They also concluded that providing an enriched litter box experience could provide better urinary tract health for your cat, meaning less likely to develop UTIs or other urinary problems. One of the major differences between a cat using a smaller litter box versus a cat using a larger litter box that they noticed was the cats using the smaller litter boxes urinated for longer, which that may sound weird, but on average, the cats using the smaller litter boxes were urinating for 52 seconds. And that might not seem like a big deal, but regardless of the size of a mammal, a mammal only takes approximately 20 seconds to fully eliminate their bladder. That means if your cat is urinating for 52 seconds, they have been holding their urine for way too long. So what this research shows is that cats using smaller litter boxes tend to hold their urine a lot longer before going and choosing to urinate, which could lead to obviously urinary problems. Holding your urine is not healthy and can lead to urinary tract infections and other issues like that. Whereas cats in the larger litter box space weren't holding their urine and were able to eliminate a lot shorter periods of time. <laughs> Another thing that was found in the research study is that even though the cats had much larger litter boxes, they still utilized every single square inch of the litter box during their elimination cycle. This means that when given the opportunity, cats will use every space that they have to complete an elimination. So just because your cat is in a small litter box and you feel like they don't need more space than that, when given the choice, a cat will explore and use a larger area when given the chance. One of the main differences between a cat using a smaller box versus the larger box that they found in this study was that cats using a smaller box excessively scratch on everything. Cats with a smaller litter box were spending two minutes post urination pawing and scratching at the litter, the walls, different surfaces, and we're doing it for about a minute after pooping. Another thing that was noticed a lot in this study was the cats in the small litter box were almost stuck in a loop where they would go to the bathroom, scratch, 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 sniff, 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 leave the litter box, and then they would come back after using the litter box to smell their elimination again to scratch to do things and then leave and come back again it was almost like they kept having to redo it whereas cats in an enriched litter box setup never went back to go sniff their stuff <laughs> so despite uh popular old beliefs that cats would just immediately stop using the litter box if they were not satisfied with the litter box this study showed that that is not true and that most cats will continue to use a litter box despite being frustrated and despite being stressed. This means that many cats who have normal sized litter boxes or small sized litter boxes at home 
may be very stressed and still continuing to use the litter box. Therefore, most pet parents are not are not realizing that their cats are frustrated and not enjoying their elimination experience. Some, some behaviors to look out for is scratching excessively for minutes and minutes on end after using the bathroom. Another one would be to be scratching at things that are not litter. The cat should only be scratching the litter when using the litter box. If they're scratching the side of the litter box, the walls, the floor outside of the litter box. This is all a frustrated and stressed response to a cat not experiencing an enriched litter box experience. This can all lead to frustration and obviously litter box problems or urinary problems. Another thing that is a big red flag is if your cat doesn't have all four paws in the litter box when eliminating. That means all four paws on the litter. If a cat is having their paws on the side of the litter box or all four paws on the side of the litter box balancing um, one paw, two paws, anything like that, that is a big red flag that they are not having an enriched experience and are most likely stressed and frustrated. One note I do want to make is I did notice that when my kitten was very, very young, he would sometimes not cover his pee and he still sometimes does this which could be a red flag for not having an enriched litter box experience is your cat not covering their bathroom. But another reason can also be if your cat is extremely hyper and just wants to play all the time, I would notice he would go to the litter box, pee really fast, and then just jump out and get back to playing. He was just distracted and just wanted to play with things. So that is something that can be a sign of a frustrated behavior, but it can also just be a kitten being a kitten. Obviously, another reason would be if they were going to the bathroom and got interrupted, they may not finish burying their stuff, um, like they got interrupted by a toy or got scared or something like that. One other thing is I have noticed my cat scratching at the side of the litter box um, when he was sick. So that was kind of like a red flag for me that he was frustrated and feeling stressed because I know normally in my enriched litter box setup, I never see those behaviors. My cat has irritable bowel disease, which causes um, constipation, diarrhea, and extreme abdominal distress. And I noticed when he was in a flare, he would start scratching at the side of the litter box after going to the bathroom. And I think he was just not feeling well. So that could be another sign that your cat um, isn't feeling well as well. If you have that nice litter box set up and they're doing that, that could be a sign that you know something is wrong. But other than those two instances, I've never seen frustrated behavior out of my cats when using the litter box besides, you know, the kitten, my cat, hyper crazy cat, just wanted to pee and then just run away and play <laughs> besides that. And then the time he was sick, I've noticed that. Um, but otherwise, my cats have never showed or expressed these behaviors, which means that they're pretty satisfied with their litter box experience. If you guys wanna read this research study for yourself, I'd highly recommend it if you're nerdy like me. Um, I'll leave the link down in the description below. It was super great, I loved it. I've read it through multiple times. But if you're not nerdy and you just wanna follow the advice in this video, that's totally fine too. <laughs> But that's basically it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and found it useful or helpful for your cats. And I really hope you guys make these changes to your cat's litter boxes because it is so important for your cat to have an enriched experience. Like I mentioned, it's not only for their mental well-being and to lower their overall stress, but also to prevent UTIs and other urinary problems. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys very soon on a new video. Bye.